InsideSales.com is pleased to introduce the co-president of Rain Group, Mike Schultz. Mike is a world-renowned consultant, speaker, sales trainer, and sales expert. He's authored several best-selling books and was named the Top Thought Sales Leader globally in 2011 by Top Sales Awards. Mike's areas of expertise include sales, strategic account management, sales negotiation, sales management, and sales performance counseling. He is a graduate of Brandeis University with a BA in American Studies and holds an MBA from Babson College. Mike currently teaches selling at Brandeis University. Thank you for joining us at the Sales Acceleration Summit today, Mike. Thanks for that introduction. We all know that there's a lot of opportunity to sell more. Sell new logos, add more value to existing accounts. There's just a tremendous opportunity to be able to have our sales forces bring in more dollars and deliver more value to clients. However, we turn to sales training and 85 to 90 percent of it fails to actually help sellers to sell more. Now this is for common reasons. So let's take a look at what some of the reasons are that sales training fails. Really, a lot of companies that set up sales training look at it from a short-term perspective when they should really be looking at it from a long-term perspective. If they look at it from the short-term perspective, it becomes jumbled, it's a flavor of the month, and salespeople don't really adopt what they learned. Now, the part of not adopting what they learned is sometimes they literally don't learn it because the training isn't set up so that people remember. But good education if you do it right, you can certainly teach something that can be learned internalized and learned well enough so that it's actually applied. Now, one of the biggest problems with sales training is new hire ramp up. Sales managers spend weeks on end with new people trying to get them up to speed. It's very time consuming, it's very ineffective. But if you do it right, it can be efficient, it can be repeatable, it can take up a lot less time from a manager and trainer perspective and it can actually work. So a lot of the methods uh, for sales training uh, are aging and they're limiting. Uh, they're not research, they're not research based, uh, and they're not modern. And what you want is to make sure that your sales for, that your sales force actually gets the current information and the current guidance for how buying works today, so they can make sure that they're selling in ways that actually succeed with those buyers. And then finally, in terms of the state of sales training, a lot of the sales training is, even if it's delivered well uh, and the, the uh, participants are happy with it, it's just not connected to their daily work. So they leave and they say, that was a good session. I don't think I'm actually going to try it. Or if they do try it, it just doesn't fit with their buyers. But if you know what's actually going to help sellers sell in your performance environment, then you can make sure that the training itself is connected to the work and it actually supports sales performance. But while a lot of companies actually get it wrong, some companies are getting it right. There are world-class companies in sales training and in performance support and in sales enablement that actually help sellers sell more and make sure the training actually works to support that. Now, it's kind of funny. When we study these kinds of companies, the companies that actually get it right, one of the most interesting things is that it never looks like quote unquote sales training. They always call it our sales education process or our sales academy or even our sales university. And regardless of how they set it up, uh, we found that they do certain things. And uh, one of them is that it's a comprehensive sales education. And it's really focused not just to deliver training, but to actually transfer skills and knowledge so the learning works. And the second part is that it enables sellers to succeed. It's actually set up and it's planned in advance to make sure that this training that we get is actually going to work. So let's now then take a look at what the companies do to make sure their sales education works and their sales education actually enables sellers to sell. We found again in studying these kinds of companies that there are essentially five things that they do, whether they label it like this or not. These are the things, the components that the companies do to set up sales training that works, sticks, and enables sellers to sell. Now, let's look at the first thing these companies do. They define their outcomes and they define a certain amount of things before they actually get started. The first one is that they do define goals and outcomes. How do we want them to sell differently? What 
metrics are we actually trying to uh, improve? Is it uh, lead to sale ratio? Is it average size of sale? Is it discounting? Is it account penetration? What are we trying to get done? If you define what you're trying to get done, you can put something together to actually help get it done. The second thing these companies do in terms of what they define is their competency models by sales role. Now when I say competency models, I just mean that they know the knowledge, the skills, and the attributes that a seller needs to produce what they have to produce in their given role. Because if you know what attributes they, they, that they need and you know what skills and knowledge they need, you know what training curriculum you can put together to try to build that. So then you actually build a curricula plan and a schedule of training by role. When I say schedule, I mean not just what we do in January, but I mean what, are they, what should they know and what should they be able to do right when they're ready to um, get on the job. And six months later, what should they be able to do? And by the second or third year, if they're in this role, what should they really be great at if they want to be great? You can schedule all of that out in advance and know what you need people to be great at. Then you want to think in advance, all right, if we're going to do any kind of training, if we're going to ask them to do or to sell any differently, what do we actually need to do for their daily jobs? What do we need to do for support? What do we need to do for coaching? What do we need to do for tools and resources to help them actually execute? And then finally, how do we get people into our system the right way from the beginning so that it's not uh, completely oppressive to management when you hire new people so that they get up to speed quickly and so that they start to produce in their job as fast as possible. So this is the define phase. What's next? Next they actually start to develop. When I say develop, I don't mean yet develop the team. I mean they actually develop the learning program that's going to work for them. So they'll do learning and team needs assessment. So I have my curriculum, but which people on the team actually need to take these things because they're not proficient at them or they're not great at them and which people uh, are actually good at them so perhaps they don't actually have to take these particular programs. Now there's a certain amount of programs that once you build a curriculum you know that okay everyone is actually going to go through this uh, and that you know that there's some that geez you know maybe people will go through this if if they uh, need the skill if they have an inclination uh, to get better at it uh, or it's just an interest area of theirs to um, to take the program well now it's actually sounding more like a university because you have um, you have your uh, required courses and you have your electives then you actually build the education programs and there are different kinds of things you need to do to build skills to get people the knowledge that they need and then to support and bring out the best attributes that are going to help them succeed then you actually need to develop sales playbooks and tools. A lot of times when we're working with companies, what they want is that the, 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 the sellers to do a complete needs discovery. So then they do training on needs discovery and it goes something like this. Oh, what questions could you ask to uncover needs? And what needs do your buyers actually have? And let's write them down and talk about them. And then they talk about them and say, okay, everyone should save all of these questions um, because they're going to be useful to you later. Well, nobody does that. Why don't you just write out all the questions and write out the playbook for how to lead a needs discovery beforehand and just teach them the best practice. Gather up everything from the sellers that is really working for them and then apply a certain amount of knowledge to that uh, for how it goes when it goes really well and just build it for them. And then finally actually develop out the sales metrics so if you're going to roll out a training program you know what you're actually trying to change and you can measure it later. Now there's delivery. About 10 or 12 years ago, uh, there was a big push to say it's not just live training or even what they used to call at the time CBT, computer-based training. Uh, it's not just a class and then it's over. You have to reinforce it. If you want to look for something interesting, Google the forgetting curve. If you just take a classroom program, there's a high degree of forgetting the program in a day two days and a lot of it in a week and that's the kind of thing that leads to that 95 percent or 85 to 90 percent of sales training fails it's not that people aren't happy with the training it's that they literally don't remember or apply it in 120 days so there was a big trend to reinforcement now we actually say when you're delivering 
don't even think about separating them. It's training and reinforcement, and you have to use all of the different modalities available to you to touch sellers in the right way so that the learning actually sticks and works and engages them over time so they want to come back to it uh, over and over. Now there's enable. This is the new trend because it's the new thing that actually helps sellers to succeed. They do the training, they remember the training because it's reinforced well, but training is change management when you're trying not just to, hey, let's make their presentation skills a little bit better, but maybe they should sell with insight or they should negotiate on value versus just caving on price or they need to be able to interact with, with executives as peers. You might teach them how to do it, but they might not be able to do it because it's a new skill, it's a new behavior, and it's hard to apply, so they just fall back on their old behaviors. But if you have the right sales management and coaching system, how often you talk with them, how you set goals and action plans, how you observe their behavior, how you help them out of their comfort zone and into their learning zone so that they do different things. That's where the enablement actually happens. Now, with the single sales portal, what does that mean there? Uh, there's a lot of research to show that salespeople look in all sorts of different places to try to find the information that they need, and they can't find it. But if you have a single sales portal, whether it's a learning management system or a sales playbook system, that helps a lot for driving sales behavior. You should then implement the playbook, make sure they're using them, and if you can, embed the behaviors that you want in the learning in their technology and their workflow. And then the fifth thing to do, and this is true of anything uh, in good management, is that you have to measure. And you can measure three things. One, you can measure uh, and assess whether or not someone's actually gained the skill or gained the knowledge. As we say in the learning world, they can do it. Now, that they will do it has to do with their attributes, and that they will do it has to do with the enablement, but if they gain the skill and the knowledge, you know that they can do it. You can also track the learning and analysis to make sure that you know who has gained what skills, who has taken what programs. A lot of times this is a mishmash. And then the last thing is you want to track the sales metrics to say, is this training that's sticking and working and being used, is it actually making a difference in our business results? So there you have it, the things that companies do, the process that they go through, whether they label it like this or not, is define, develop, deliver, enable, and measure. But again, the last thing I want to I say is that this isn't just a process, it's a change in thinking. If you think about sales training as sales training programs, it's often not going to work. You have to reframe the thinking, and oftentimes you have to reframe the thinking for the other folks in your team, the leadership, that it's not a sales training program. We are going to deliver world-class sales university. Put quotes around our sales university. We're going to have our own university that actually drives uh, the behaviors that they want and builds the skills and knowledge uh, and the attributes that our sellers need to actually succeed. And to do this, if you're in leadership in sales, or if you're in leadership in general, uh, or if you're in training, you are not a trainer. You are not doing a training program. You are doing change management. And we say, you have to be a change VIP. You have to bring the vision, which is world-class sales education. It works really well. You have to be willing to influence the people that you need to get something like this underway, oftentimes against resistance. And you have to bring your passion. Because if people don't believe it and people don't get behind it, then something like this isn't going to work. So there you have it, world-class sales education by building your own sales university. Now, just to finish up, if you want to bring world-class sales education to your company, uh, give us a call. Uh, the number's right there on the screen. Send us an email. You can also email directly at mschultz at raingroup.com. That's M-S-C-H-U-L-T-Z at raingroup.com or just visit our, our website at raingroup.com to check us out for more. So thanks so much, really appreciate it, and hope you have a great day.